Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectures, and welcome to another new year. And with a new year, we get a new game room tour, so stay tuned. So as you enter into the basement, there are some posters and pictures there. Scarface and Steve Eisman, one of my favorite hockey players. There is also just a bunch of loose boxes of stuff uh, that I have that I should probably throw out, but I just kept anyway. Starlink, my Xbox One box, my Switch box, Google Home Minis, a few other little random things. My Hapog HD PVR, which I don't get much use out of. I'm um, actually probably going to start doing some recording of games and put that on, on video for you guys to see. Some maybe Dreamcast games. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. As you come down the stairs, you greeted with my eBay section. This is stuff that I thrift and try to flip to help fund the channel and help, you know, get some more of that Dreamcast goodness that I need in my collection. Overlooked by a Kurt Cobain poster. And one of my favorite posters that I have down here, a friend of mine gave me this a few years back and it's from one of my favorite shows, Breaking Bad. I'm the one who knocks and if you're familiar with the show, you know exactly where that's from. You're goddamn right. Over there is a kid's room, and over here is, this is my comic book section, very small little section. Some artwork I drew on the bottom there. Uh, I'm a big Superman fan, as you can see that there's Superman stuff just thrown in there. Some of it is just, it looks very sloppy. I'm, I want to do something new with this. I don't know what, because it's not a very big selection or a big collection of, of stuff, so I don't know exactly what I want to do with that. I'm contemplating putting my Dreamcast back into that shelf right there, but I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do with that before I do the switch over. So uh, right there, you're greeted with the Beatles. I am also a very big Beatles fan. The Beatles? The what? Right there is my Claritone Princess 1970, I think 1972 record player my dad restored. And uh, yeah, a bunch of Beatles stuff there. Over here, you're greeted with my DVDs and CDs and a whole bunch of Blu-rays and just some random stuff there that I've gotten these CDs and DVDs over the years. These are from my original collection. None of these are like new editions. All these are from when I was you know, much younger and buying music and buying DVDs. Some really good stuff in there. You guys can see that. Dumb and Dumber, always a classic movie. When you can quote that a hundred times over and still be funny, then you have a classic in hand. What is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. Star Wars collection there. The original trilogy. Seven, a classic movie. Such a good, good movie. Small Blu-ray selection. I don't have many. I just... Uh, everything's streaming nowadays, so there's no real point in buying Blu-rays unless it's something I really, really want for myself. CDs. I got some uh, Beatles there, Eminem, Guns N' Roses. The ones that are sticking out, I don't know if you guys could see that. The ones that are sticking out are the ones I had, but I misplaced the CD and I don't know where the hell I put them. Some little trinkets and junk over here, nothing big. Here's some more artwork. Scarface, uh, if you guys seen from the beginning. It's one of my favorite movies. I actually really do enjoy that movie a lot. And a PS2 loose disc that I had, and I figured I might as well just tack that with some uh, the Play-Doh tack. I don't know what, what kind it is. It's uh, just a little tack that you put on there and it sticks on. It doesn't ruin the CD. And a few other things. Uh, NES Club, Jay Bartlett, and the Nintendo Quest. Some little artwork sign there. My Dreamcast collection, all these little ones that are missing the gaps on, they're on a table right now waiting to be shot a video of. Right now I'm at 191 games. I'm missing about 59 of them in total. Spills over to there. I have uh, Shenmue right there and Shenmue 3 and Shenmue 2 right now is in my Dreamcast. But yeah, there's some great titles in there. Giga Wings and Marvel vs. Capcom, The Blitzes. 
so many great titles in there. Soul Reaver, one of my favorite games on the system. And then you get into the black labeled stuff. Crazy Taxi 2, Dino Crisis. And then a small NES collection, not very big. My small N64 collection, some standouts right there. Conquer's Bad Fur Day and Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. Very, very small PS1. I was, you know, avidly looking for PS1 stuff and then I decided not to. Not because I didn't enjoy the system. One, they don't hold up very well. Uh, but two, I just wanted to grab some of the games that mean something to me. I, I, beginning, I was just grabbing just about anything. You could see some FIFAs and some nonsense in there. And then I just stopped because I just wanted to grab some of the games that are more meaningful to me. So, you know, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear, um, WWF Attitude, even though it's a terrible game, I still played a lot of it. Um, yeah, and that's basically it for my PlayStation 1. Some demo discs in there for the Dreamcast. This was a little art project I did for some loose Game Boy games that came across a lot, and I decided to make some little artwork and little cases out of them. So here is Link to the Past. Some more NES games there. Again, I, I'm not an avid collector for the NES, so these are the games I either come across or games that mean something to me um, as far as collecting goes. Small 3DS and small GameCube. Again, not amassing much on them. Just because I'm focusing solely on the Dreamcast. So if I do come across something, I'm either flipping it or I'm trying to get something that means something to me as far as collecting goes. Uh, my Wii games you can see a lot of kid friendly games there the just dance just dance kids my friendly tail and all that um again same thing not much i'm looking for on there the only one that i'm going to keep forever just because if i were to sell off my entire collection is this one right here my fairy tale adventure and not because of anything this is the first game my daughter's beaten from beginning to end and it means a lot more to me than pretty much anything that's in this collection, really. When she got a chance to beat it, her expression was priceless, so I'm gonna probably keep that. Not probably, I'm gonna keep that forever. My small Xbox, I had so much more, but again, selling off collections and all that. Some classic games there, the Halos, Project Gotham's, I used to love playing online, Project Gotham Racing 2 especially. Splinter Cell, Double Agent, I used to love playing online as well. Chaos Theory, True Crime was a great game. Um, some of my 360, again, sold off a lot of that as well. The Halos, the Gears of War. I'm missing three, but I have the collection, so it doesn't really make a difference. I'm probably gonna grab it just to finish the trilogy, but I have the collection, but it is digital, so I'd rather have it physical so I can put it in at any point in time. Assassin's Creed, great games. Here's my Xbox One collection. It spills over to another shelf right there. And right over here, Forza 5 and Forza 6. PS2 is something that I'm contemplating spinning out to make some space. Uh, as you can see, my shelf is at near full capacity. I'm gonna spill over to my Blu-ray section and my CD section there. But some of these PS2 games, again, I'm just amassing games that I would come across and you never see them really and I would grab them. But now they're at the point where they don't mean much to me as far as getting them. I also have them on other systems like the Resident Evil 4. I have it on the GameCube, which is actually by my GameCube right now. And a few other ones that I have on various other systems. So. Grabbing the PS2 games, I'm probably going to slim them down and, and move on. PS3, same thing. I'm not looking forward to getting more of the PS3 games. PS4, a few games I have uh, actually at the console right now. 
and uh, I'm looking forward to actually playing one of them in the near future. My Switch and my PSP, lonely PSP game. I had more, again, sold them off. I still have my PSP, but I sold off so many games. There are some of the first party games on there. The Switch, really, really love the Switch. Such a great system. Small Genesis and my Shenmue Lightbox that came with the Shenmue 3 Collector's Edition. This was something that was early on to the collecting. I think I bought this five years ago and I came across it at a pawn shop and not because it meant anything to me, it was so cool to find an Atari game uh, from the 80s, full in box, complete in box, like brand new. And I actually have it somewhere in here uh, loose as well. But seeing that, I had to grab it. I think I paid like two bucks for it and I was really happy to have that. And such a piece of history and the artwork alone is it's un unbelievable. It's really, really cool. Some of these uh, handhelds that my wife grabbed, I think she grabbed it from Walmart. They're really bad. They're L LCD screens. And uh, they're actually, you can see that it's just the map is already on there. It doesn't change. It just animates. That's about it. There is a switch case in my 3DS or DS case right there. Cade from Destiny 2, another Destiny, I don't know, Lego block, I guess you could say I got this for free. A Mario mug my wife got me for Christmas one year. There is the Halo Master Chief Tutaku. It's pretty cool, pretty detailed as well. And some artwork my wife, my daughter drew and a pullback. This is something that I really, really like. The Retrolector Edition. Uh, I don't know if Microids knew anything about me. I highly doubt that. But it's cool that it's a Retrolector Edition. Um, I came up with that name, the Retrolectors, five, six years ago. And I've never seen anybody ever use that in a sentence. And to see this be made, which is pretty cool. And my CD resurfacer. Then we go over here, which is my battle station as far as editing goes. Some knockoff and some really cheap light boxes uh, right on the sides there. My uh, iMac, uh, which the details uh, you'll see in, the, in a little bit later. Uh, some stands and mouse and all that. That box right there, the Retrolector's box, is a stabilizer, which is I'm actually using right now to hold my phone because my camera is right there with the microphone. So I'm doing this on my phone with a wide angle lens to get some more angles in there. My couch, there's the light boxes there. And my Canon T5i. I really like this camera. It's a 25 millimeter lens, or sorry, 24 millimeter lens and it does the bokeh, which if you're unfamiliar, bokeh is the blurry screen in the background where the, the subject, the front is really uh, detailed and the back is blurry. So this 24 millimeter lens actually does the job on that. A Rode Micro, which uh, I'm really happy that I grabbed that early on. Uh, it makes video producing so much better. I, I think I wanna grab the uh, Rode shotgun mic or maybe another shotgun mic just because the audio on this is great but only up close when you get for like about five feet away it's kind of tones down the audio and then you get some artwork over here followed by a character of me and my wife i uh, went to a wedding and somebody decided uh, to draw this and my wife pulling me away, which is pretty cool. The Retrolectors, that's uh, me and Danny, uh, an artist actually drew that for us, which is unbelievable. The detail in that alone is fantastic. And then we get to the piece, the resistance. This is my slice of heaven right here. This is where I love to sit in front of some boxes up top. 
Shenmue 3, some controllers, my 3DS and my DS, my PSP, Joker always overlooking. And then you get some of the other Xbox and iPhone and iMac stuff. Here's the iMac that I use. Some people ask me what I use as far as editing or what software I use. I use Final Cut Pro with this computer. It's a little outdated, so I think from 2015. Uh, I have to always clean out the, serve, the, the memory just to get some more videos in there, but it does its purpose. Uh, each one of these boxes, there's four boxes from Ikea. Each one of these boxes is divided by consoles or by generations of like systems. So this is my Nintendo Nook right here. So I got my original NES, my original N64, and then a toy shelf, which I, these are only systems Keep in mind, these are only systems that I've ever had. I didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I never bought a Super Nintendo. I have no desire to buy a Super Nintendo. I have my Wii modded with Super Nintendo games. Uh, just keep that in mind. These are only systems that I've ever had and I've gotten again. Uh, my GameCube and my modded Wii right there which I play Resident Evil 4 right now on there. My Xbox Nook right here, uh, my one gaping hole right there is for my Xbox One, which is all the way upstairs in my family room. Uh, when I do bring it down, that's where it's gonna go. And Master Chief right there. So my original Xbox and my original 360. I had the 360, the launch edition, the, the plain white one, but it went through so many variations and uh, it broke on me so many times that I had to grab the elite system here. I don't really use it too much because I like the backwards compatibility of the Xbox One. So right now it's connected, but I'm probably gonna disconnect it and bring my One down here to do some backwards compatibility. Then you get to uh, the dual screen. I saw something like this on, I think it was on Etsy or I remember Pinterest or something like that where somebody built in a cabinet with two or three screens. And I'm like, that is an amazing idea. So I decided to do some sort of variation of it. So I got, uh, I think this is from 2011, Regza Toshiba Television. This is one one of the wedding gifts that uh, me, my wife, or my wife got me, and it still works fine. It's a little bit small, but it does its job. Uh, I can go bigger, but then I have to really change the configuration of the shelf. Um, I have. It sitting on a piece of wood that's painted and you guys can see it right there. It's a piece of wood that stretches from one end to the other. And if I go bigger, I then have to get a bigger piece of wood so that it can stabilize all the shelves together. Uh, I don't really want to do that, so I'm happy with that. There right now is a Magnasonic television uh, playing Shenmue 2 and my surround sound down there. So like I said, I could watch TV up top and play games on the bottom. I can't do vice versa. I can't watch TV on the bottom and play games on top. So it's just one or the other, the two variations. Uh, like last night I was playing the Shenmue 2 and watching the Green Bay game, so which is pretty cool. Uh, over here is my Sega section right here. Minus that little box of uh, Mario. This is my Atari 2600. Unfortunately, it does not work anymore. It's just there for aesthetic purposes, but I love it still, no matter what. That was the first console I've ever had. My, Se my Sega Genesis Model 2, again, the this is the original model I had, and I'm really happy with that. Here is my beast right here. The Dreamcast with a Shenmue to repro which isn't uh something that came out here we got nothing uh, we didn't get shenmue 2 here we got nothing we got shenmue 1 and then pal and japanese areas got shenmue 2. we got it eventually on the xbox original xbox and this is actually the port of that game it has some audio issues and some syncing issues where um, dialogue kind of blends into each other but you can still play the game and it's still unbelievable great game here's my playstation nook right here from playstation 1 playstation 2 slim and my fat playstation 3 and my playstation 4 right there is my shenmue 3 which i'm 
can't wait to play him just in the middle of so many games that I want to knock off the list before I move on. I just, I, I can't bring myself to play that many games all at once. And I'm not the type of person that when I play a game, I move on. I like to finish it and to completion or at least finish it, the story, and then move on. I do not want to just neglect a game just because. And uh, right there are some Dreamcast videos and games that I have uh, planned videos for. It's uh, like I said, I set aside and write scripts. And when I do a video, I just sit down and I try to base an idea or base a thought process around what I want to do. So I either write down ideas or I get the physical games and I set them down and try to blend some sort of idea together to get an actual video out if you like what you saw please like comment subscribe this is just a video off the cuff and no real editing is going to go into this maybe just some transitions but please like comment subscribe let me know what you guys think thanks guys